When I saw the reports of the U.S. government planning to investigate UAPs, I said to myself, what's a UAP? And then you read the fine print and it's unidentified aerial phenomenon. And I said to myself, that kind of sounds like UFO. But regardless whether we're talking about UFOs or UAPs, both of them refer to stuff happening in the sky and you don't know what it is, period, okay? We can agree on that, because that's what the U stands for, unidentified. If there's something in the sky that you later identify, it goes from being a UFO to an IFO, an identified flying object, and then you move on. Why should the government be interested in UFOs? Seems to me, if something over our head could possibly pose a threat, to us, to our safety, to our health, our economy. Who are you gonna call? Call the military, the Air Force. I'm not surprised that there's military, governmental level military interest in trying to figure out what is happening in the sky among objects you can't otherwise identify. No problem with that. Allocate some portion of the Pentagon budget to identifying them. People have come to equate UFOs with aliens, which is a curious equation in our brains because it goes something like this. There are lights in the sky doing something I've never seen anything do before. I can't explain it. I don't know what it is. Therefore, it's a visiting alien from another planet. So what we tend to do is explain away our ignorance with aliens. Now that's just intellectually lazy. Aliens can't have done all of that. <laughs> it happens on many levels. The people who see the pyramids, and rather than credit the African culture who created them, because you don't know how somebody did it thousands of years ago, you can't figure it out, and you're not giving them the intellectual credit for having accomplished it, so you say, aliens helped them. It's a common sort of fallback position. What I would say is, as a scientist, you learn to embrace the unknown. You, uh, you encounter something, you don't know what it is, I want to find out more. And you don't assert that you know what it is after you've just admitted you don't know what it is. You don't know what it is? Let's perform more experiments. Let's get better data. Let's keep investigating it. So I don't have any problems continuing to investigate stuff in the sky. You being a scientist, I'm interested. What do you guys in your community, looking out into space for your entire life, how do you view UFOs? First of all, I, I love me some aliens. Nobody doesn't love the aliens. Okay. All right? That would be a discovery of, of all of civilization. If aliens showed up and we sat down and had tea with them. Actually, if they showed up and we did anything with them. <laughs> right. So let me offer a, just a couple of uh, perspectives, just so we can, let me orbit it first with perspectives and then I'll land in the middle by the end. Okay. So first of all, notice how frequently aliens are hostile to us as portrayed in movies. And that goes back to the Twilight Zone and before, of course, the, one, one of the more famous episodes. They had aliens in many episodes, by the way. But this is back in the 1960s, late 50s, that uh, an episode called To Serve Man, where aliens came and they helped us grow crops and they gave us secrets to our energy needs and they, there was peace all over the earth and they invited us to go back and visit them. And uh, they accidentally left behind a book called To Serve Man within their own sort of hieroglyphic kind of text. And so they got all the best cryptographers looking at it and after everyone has already decided, yeah, let's go visit their planet because they're obviously superior to us. And we're all very well fed because the crops are bounty uh, all over the earth. And then you know, they find out that to serve man it is a cookbook. That's awesome. It, it's a cookbook. That's so, so, great. <laughs> now, it, it is rumored. I've not studied this, but I've, I've read studies that to a child, it is far worse to be eaten than to just die. So of all the ways to die, 
They're not even afraid of other ways to die. But the idea of being eaten is particularly horrifying. I think to and anybody. That's what. Well, <laughs> okay, that's just but children. especially children. But and that's why the fairy tales are always involved. The Brothers Grimm. The, b- the witch the, the, eats the, you. The ogre they, you eats get, you. The troll. They, they don't eats just stab you. you. Right. They, right. They don't shoot you. They don't throw you off a cliff. They eat they you. Eat you. And this is terrifying. And I think this is why we, as children, um, deeply respect T. Rex. Ask any kid who their favorite animal is. It's T. Rex because. You respect anything that can eat you. Right. And then you bring them over to astrophysics and say, what's your favorite object in astrophysics? It's black holes because they can eat you. Well, okay. Okay, cool. All right, so, so here's the thing. So the, this evil alien concept, uh, I, it feels like we are basing this on actual evidence of how we treat each other rather than on any notion of how aliens would actually treat us. How many photographs are taken every day? Everybody's got a smartphone, right? Almost everybody. High resolution. Uh, And if you're not taking a photo, you're taking a video. And so if there's something unusual and interesting, you're taking a video of that. We have video of stuff you never got videos of before. So you'd think an alien encounter would be rare. But you've got a smartphone, and you can stream it. In the old days, when people said, did you take pictures of the alien that abducted you? Uh, Yeah, but they stole the film. Or I got the film home, and the whole roll was blank because the alien zapped it or whatever. So so it's a recording device, but a streaming device is not a recording device. So you can live stream whatever is happening. All right? So so you would expect, given how many reports of abductions there were, Right of decades past, Mm -hmm. that somebody would have that on, you know, that'd be posted by now, and it hasn't been. So this leads me to think strongly that people's imaginations got the better side of their life experience when they came back to report on having been abducted. Mm. Okay? So there's that. So, so, So that's aliens. That's just aliens. But how about UFOs? So you see something flying, and it's something you don't know what it is. And let me just say, I was going to tweet this too. Maybe I should. Uh, I was going to say, the fact that you don't know what it is is not evidence that you know what it is. <laughs> okay? That's actually that's pretty profound because that's exactly what people do. So there's lights in the sky moving in a peculiar way, and you can't explain it. It's unidentified, and it's flying, and it's an object, so it's a UFO. It must be aliens. And then pe- <laughs> So I don't know what it is. Therefore, it must be A, B, C, D, elemental P, alien. And I'm thinking, you just admitted. You don't, you don't know what know it is. What it is. That's kind of where that stops. We're done here, okay? It's time to get more and better data. Okay, so now, in science, do you know why science exists? Because the human sensory system sucks. The advance of science and civilization with it came about primarily because we invented machines to replace our sensory system. Because it fails so badly. And look, why do we have whole books on, uh, what do you call them, on optical illusions, right? Right. Those are fun. We, nobody doesn't love an opti- good optical illusion. Right. And, 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 and what is an optical illusion? It's, oh, there's a line, and, and it's, it's simple, right? It's simple line drawing on a white page. Oh, is that line bigger than the other one? I don't know. Are they the same size? Oh, my gosh. Look how easy it is to fool you. And this is just a simple line drawing. <laughs> now I'm going to have something complicated in, in, in twilight, with, in, a, in a sky with you've never seen. But, and, and now you, I'm expecting you to give me an accurate account of what just happened? Uh, uh, no. So in science, eyewitness testimony is the lowest form of evidence there is. In fact, it's so low, we don't even, we basically don't accept it. Wow. So when you see people say, this was a Navy pilot who's trained and he's a credible witness for what he saw, uh, 
You're saying your species check. You're saying that guy is just as much a dumbass as anybody standing on the ground. <laughs> that <laughs> Navy pilot or not, being a human being, he's susceptible to the same perception bias that anybody else. Perception is. bias. And it's, it's not purposeful, you know. Right. They're not trying to. It's just the consequence of the human being trying to make sense of their world. And when things don't make sense, we have the urge to make it make sense so that we can think about it in some way that's consistent with our life experience. So I've had people say, oh, I saw this, this bright light in the sky. It was huge. So, no, they meant it was just bright because the vocabulary is... I, I saw this light and it was a few inches above Marty's Deli. What do you mean a few inches? Was it an angle? It was in the sky? You know, so our, even our capacity to retell things is compromised because we're human. All right, so all I'm asking for is among the six billion images and videos uplifted to the internet every day that are high resolution, it'd be nice if a few of them had an alien getting out of their spacecraft. Or, or you going up to greet the, give me some footage of that, of some high res videos. But you don't have that. What you have is lately fuzzy Navy video, right. monochromatic. And so you're telling me that the aliens uh, are only revealing themselves to the Navy. <laughs> well, that's not a bad place to start. <laughs> they, they do have the best uniforms. <laughs> Plus, if the aliens are everywhere, but do you know how many planes, when we're in full flying mode, you know how many planes are crisscrossing this planet every minute? Right. All right. If, we were, if there were aliens all over the place, this would be like a major hazard for airplanes. Okay, and we'd be seeing them all the time. All right, so we take this one case out of tens or hundreds of thousands, and it's a weird thing, and nobody can explain it, and all of a sudden, everybody can explain it. So that's the, I don't know what it is, but therefore I know what it is. So, by the way, we as scientists, we'd love to meet the aliens. I have no problems with this. We just need better evidence than your credible witness. I just need better evidence than your fuzzy video. Amanda Clark uh, writes and says, if the government did have contact, why would they not share it with us? Uh, I know it starts from a conspiracy, uh, conspiracy theory place, but I just wonder if there would be any logical reason to keep the info from us. Good yeah, question. Yeah. Is the government hiding? Go ahead. Ben, tell me. I mean, if you can. I mean, maybe, maybe <laughs> I'm not I'm clear to hear this. <laughs> Are they listening? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I mean, this is this is this is exa this is a perfect question, and and you know, I've pointed this out to people before. You know, I've asked people like, why exactly? You know, for, for the conspiracy theorist, why why is it that the, you think that people would would be the government would make all this, and not just one government, of course. We're talking an international consortium spanning many administrations and countries and decades uh, to all suppress this evidence. And it just doesn't make sense. Some people say, well, you know, it's because, you know, if if people really thought that that aliens were contacting us, then you know, then it would be there would be mass panic. And of course, the, the the reply to that is, but if you look at polls. Many people already think that aliens have contacted us, so right. that that has not happened. So that that explanation, well, there would be mass panic. No, 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 no. A lot of you, like as you said, you know, depending on what not, what's, what poll you look at, uh, between you know a quarter and a third of them already think that. So that clearly hasn't happened. They they don't have an answer. They're That's, still going to work at, uh, every day, you know. They're... Yeah, but couldn't you make the argument just because somebody might think that it happened is very different from being presented with hard evidence? Yeah, well, there, there, there may be something to that. I mean, uh, Ben, it, it's okay to say, well, I believe that it's true, but if, if the, uh, the government powers that be who can get to the bottom of it, presumably, say, uh, well, yes, we've actually been, we have the aliens freeze dried and stacked up at Area 51. If they say that, you know, everybody would go nonlinear. But if they say, no, we don't have any evidence of the alien visitation, everybody would say, that's a, they're, they're lying to us. So I don't see how it solves anything. But suppose yeah. they, if they did do it, I mean, do you think that people would be rioting in the streets? We're not going to work today. We're going to riot in the streets because uh, they've got aliens. 
No, this this is absurd. I mean, again, they're, they're, the government is in a no-win situation because the thing is that, that even if the government came totally clean tomorrow and declassified everything and said, look, here's what's going on you know, at Area 51, here's uh, you know, Air Force bases, the fact is that the, the conspiracy theorists wouldn't believe them. They would assume there's there's another layer of the cover-up. So, and this is inherent, of course, in conspiracy theory thinking, is that there's no way to disprove it because anything you offer them as counter evidence is taken as part of the conspiracy. Yeah, so, you're part of the cover-up, Ben. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's 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 no way to, to argue with these people because you know it's like well anything you say. So, you know, the, and it's, it, this, again, that's one of the problems is that you know when from the government point of view. No matter what they say, people aren't going to believe it. So, you know, let let them wonder what's at Area 51. Who cares? How much of the galaxy have we actually searched oh. for life? See. Because I, every time I'm out in the street, someone says, we've looked and we haven't found any. Are we alone? That's right. And I'm, I'm trying to find a way to tell them we're not likely alone. But they know we've been looking for a while. So how do you how do you deal with this? So I try and tell people about all the different ways you might have to look to get it right. All the different frequencies, be at the right time, looking at the right place. All this has to come together. Right. Now, that big volume that you need to search through, set that equal to the volume of the Earth's oceans. Okay. All that water. So how much have we sampled in the last 50 years? One 12 ounce glass. It's not a lot. And so, so if you were looking for fish in the ocean, are there any fish in the Earth's ocean? Here's a glass. I'm gonna scoop up a glass and I'm gonna look at it. And there aren't any fish in there. Can you claim that there are no fish in the ocean? Yeah, you'd be stupid to do so. Yeah, and so it's the fact that the it's hard to comprehend how big the search is. So you can't understand how little we've done. However, exponentials will save us because our ability to search mainly the growth of technology, computing. Exponential right, growth of storage, retrieval of information. All that stuff. Detectors. It gets faster and better all the time. Seth, what's your take on that? It's exploration. It's exploration. It's like sitting around in the bars of Europe you know, 300, 400 years ago and saying, yeah, what do you think, Ralph? Do you think there's a continent at the bottom of the globe, right? And you can say, well, what good is it going to do to find it if it's there? What we will learn is that we're unique, yes, but we're not special. I'm special. <laughs> <laughs> but if we are actually alone, it would seem to me that our responsibility is even greater because if the universe has no other consciousness in it other than ours, it seems like we owe it to the universe to keep ourselves going. If, if there is no intelligent like life other than us, then the universe itself loses meaning in a way because there's nothing to, to observe it. David Hamilton, Mayagas, Puerto Rico. Would it be more likely that any intelligent signal we detect is simply an echo of life now long gone? How could we tell the difference? And if we couldn't, can we still claim we aren't alone? Seth. Yeah, well, look, people ask that. You pick up a signal, it took, you know, who knows how many years to get here. Maybe they're gone. Well, maybe they are gone. But you know what? The time it takes for a signal to get here might be tens, hundreds, thousands of years. You know, the U.S. Post Office might give me a, a letter from my aunt tomorrow, and maybe my aunt has died since she sent that letter. It's possible, but the lifetime of ants is pretty long compared to the functioning of the Postal Service, so the chances are she's still around. I think that if we pick up a signal, yeah, maybe it's a 100-year-old signal, but I'd like to think that they haven't self-destructed in the last century. Good. Next. James Coltus, Bentonville, Arkansas. If SETI discovered extraterrestrial intelligence, how long would it take to share the discovery to the public? And what is the process involved with making it public? I would say a billionth of a second. <laughs> yeah. Do you tell the president too first? Long. Does the president get to know first? No. I, look, we don't have a call list. You know, start with this, will you? <laughs> I mean, we have had false alarms. In 1997, we had a false alarm that for most of the day looked like the real deal. And I kept waiting for the Pentagon to call, the White House to call. The only people that called were the New York Times. And the facts are that they were calling within hours of us finding the signal. Yeah, so this notion that the government is somehow in control, and no, this is not the case. The government is not that high functioning.